Well, good evening, everyone. Um, when I was invited to, to be involved in this project, um, I asked Bruce, the, um, I said, am I going to die soon? <laughs> in this last year, I got two legend awards um, and, and a lifetime achievement. And you know, those usually come right before you go, so. I don't know. I'm just glad I'm going to make it through the evening, I hope. Uh, George is with Jack, and uh, he's been with him night and day except for Thursday for two hours because there was a sale at Barney's, and he said, I'll be right back. <laughs> I came to Dallas in 1980. Uh, it was an amazing year to come here. I arrived in the middle of the biggest ice storm in the history of the city. It took three and a half days for me to get from El Paso to Dallas on ice-covered roads, and then three and a half or four months later, we went into the hottest and longest summer in the history of Dallas. So my first year was quite eye-opening. Um, I really wasn't very active the first two or three years. I was just busy getting acclimated and um, socializing a lot. I cleaned up a lot of this, so um, <laughs> you can take that for whatever, you know. But in the 80s, we did socialize a lot. <laughs> oh my, 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 my. And uh, about 1983, uh, the end of 83, early 84, the Turtle Creek Corral was one of the first large group organizations um, that was uh, given the HIV test. And we were at our summer retreat, and they paired us up in partners. It was sort of like for moral support. And John Thomas and I were partnered together. And we went into the room. We did the blood test. And then we sat there. And then they come out, and they give you a number. And they tell you to call in like two weeks. You know, And those were an excruciating two weeks. And then I got the phone call. And of course, you know, thinking back on my life, I said, well, I've got to be positive. There's no way possible that I can't be, and sure enough, I was. And so they sent me to a recommended doctor um, at, um, I believe it was at Medical City. I do remember the experience because I went in for my appointment, and um, he wouldn't shake my hand. And so he talked to me, and before we left, he said, you know, I really suggest that you get your affairs in order. And I'm only telling you this because I was reading the Dallas Morning News online last month and noticed that he died. <laughs> and I'm still here. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I've had several affairs that I've gotten in order since I talked to him. So <laughs> it's all been good for me. Uh, the city literally changed my life because um, I came from a whole different world, uh, Las Vegas, where it was there really wasn't any kind of community. It was it was just a business town. It was run by mobsters back in those days, and um, I was part of the entertainment community. So when I came to Dallas, um, after all of that part of my life was over, and decided I wanted to do something else. Um, from the very beginning, it was the people in this city that amazed me. Um, and one of my first discoveries, and the reason that the topic they really wanted me to talk on, was um, my faith through all of this. And um, it really is what's gotten me here to where I am today. Um, you know, and I think that whatever you believe in, or whoever, or whatever it might be, I think that there is something greater than all of us that sort of guides us and um, it's gotten me through all the years of difficult times and uh, brought a lot of joy to my life and I discovered at the very first in 1983 going to MCC at Reagan and Brown and hearing Reverend Don Eastman preach and changed my life in one afternoon I had never heard anyone speak I mean I came from the Midwest, and I was raised a uh, Methodist, which my grandmother used to call a denture Christian because there was really no bite to, this, to the uh, <laughs> theology. <laughs> uh, 
So we were, there was really, uh, I, I'd never faced any kind of controversy or anything. I had never experienced the, the Baptist experience until I came to Texas. And then I discovered that we weren't popular at all, um, at least for some folks. And then I found MCC Church. And it was, at the time, the only thing uh, really for an openly gay, lesbian, or gay man or anybody else transgendered, bisexual. Uh, it was the only really open and welcoming church that, you know, that spoke, you know, positively and that love was the message and uh, not damnation and all of those other things. So uh, I found a home there very quickly. I joined the choir. I sang with the choir for the longest time. Uh, when Don left to become an elder in the MCC church, and Michael Piazza came along. Uh, we started, one of the first things was a capital campaign. We knew that we were outgrowing our little space and we needed to move along. Uh, one of my dear friends from all of those years is sitting right there, Reverend Carol West, too, who was also on the staff of MCC. We've had many a venture together, her and I, and Angela, so uh, about, I don't know, about the second year, well, the first year before, actually, before Michael came, uh, I offered to do a little fundraiser that we ended up calling That's What Friends Are For. And I went around the community and gathered up some of my friends that I knew that were talented and could sing or entertain. Um, and we put together a little review show, and we had it in the social hall at MCC. And uh, from that first one, we ended up having 14 more. And for 14 years off and on, we did That's What Friends Are For all through the pink building and all the way into the building that now is uh, UCC, Cathedral of Hope. So um, we watched that growth. But the part that amazed me was that when I started at church, and I believe our membership role, because I got my first newsletter as a new member, membership role was like 285 members at the little church on Reagan and Brown and you think about where it is now but the thing that really is remarkable is it was the only space at the time but now because of churches like uh, St. Thomas and North Haven and Oak Lawn uh, United Methodist and all of these other churches that have now opened their doors and become more welcoming you know spirituality and the LGBT community have a much much greater presence in this city than we ever had before um, there are options uh, depending on uh, the level of your faith Carol West has a wonderful wonderful church in Fort Worth that is doing tremendous they're actually in a capital campaign I believe to to, uh, to buy their building and to expand so uh, congratulations for that. And uh, she is still in the pulpit preaching the message of God's love to everyone, and I thank her for that. Um, as I went through the years and, you know, I went to church on Sundays, and then, of course, you know, Friday and Saturday night I was at the Roundup, and, um, you know, there were days back then when there were maybe lost nights at the, the Club Baz, you know. I had a very interesting and full, colorful life back then. Uh, but the thing that never changed any of that was in every place that I went, whether it was a bar or a restaurant or the church or for a conference or anything among our community, the people of Dallas have been the one shining example. We host an annual international press tour here now that Dallas Tavern Guild sponsors every year. We bring travel writers from all over the world, from all major LGBT publications, to come and spend a week with us here in Dallas and then go home and write about us. And it is unanimously, um, you know, we don't have a big lake, we don't have mountains, we don't have a ski resort, we don't have a big amusement park, but we have the most amazing people in this city and the thing that they talk about and write about is the hospitality here and the unity here, the way our city uh, works together and bonds together. When the HIV crisis became really a crisis, we were one of so unique in the fact that our women's community was the people, they were the people who stepped forward and took care of the men in this city <laughs> who needed the help and needed daily care 
They stayed with them. They put them in their homes. They fed them uh, when, there were, when there were no alternatives, before there was any kind of options, before we had an Oaklawn Community Services or a Resource Center of Dallas. So I think that that period started the bond between our community because we are closer as men and women here than most any other large LGBT community in the country. You don't find this kind of bond in San Francisco's gay and lesbian community or in New York or in Chicago or anywhere else. But here, um, we do think of each other. We include each other. Uh, we have wonderful places uh, for s to socialize, like this beautiful club here, uh, our entertainment industry, uh, our leadership is absolutely loaded with women in leadership. We have some very strong, very bright, and very powerful women who lead our community here, not just in the LGBT community, but in the mainstream and in corporate America. So I think that in retrospect for everything that I have experienced thus far, and um, I hope that I'm not done yet, um, there's a parade coming in a few months, and I've got to get that organized real quick now. So. <laughs> This will be my 11th year with the Dallas Tavern Guild as their executive director, and uh, next year in 2013, we will celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Alan Ross Texas Freedom Parade. So we're very proud of that. The people in our community that have um, taken that project from when it was literally just a... Um, they pulled together by a few friends. There were a couple of, of difficult and struggled attempts to have a pride celebration um, in the late 70s and 1980. And um, it just never really came together. And when they came to the Dallas Tavern Guild, and this was before I was ever involved, you know, they took upon their shoulders an Alan Ross himself, who was a very busy man because if you knew Alan, and if you knew anything about him, any Wednesday of the year, he was at the city council meeting, seated in those chairs. And if there was an issue at all, Alan was there to raise his hand and speak against it. He fought for seven years to get us a memorial in Lee Park, uh, which stands to this day. Uh, they, have m they are moving, actually, the plaque. And we're re re replanting in his memory the tree that that Alan originally planted uh, got some sort of disease and uh, they took it down last year. But this year, the Tavern Guild, in commemoration of his, of the 10th anniversary of, or the 20th anniversary of when we named it the Alan Ross Freedom Parade, uh, we are planting a new tree and we're moving the memorial up to the, uh, the stone reflecting part of uh, Lee Park. But uh, it is still the official home of, of the Alan Ross and the AIDS Memorial. So we were very proud of all the work he did there, um, the years that he spent getting the Pride Parade organized, and he and Paul Lewis and Kathy Jack, three people, organized that entire madness. And I don't know how they did it, because I have a steering committee of 20 and about 150 volunteers to make it what it is today. But um, they did an amazing job. They're pioneers before us. Uh, we're just still glad that a lot of them are still here. Um, so many of the heroes that are not here tonight, uh, but it, this is a great opportunity to recall them and remember them. And so I hope that when uh, your turn comes to share your history, you know, that, um, that you will be right there to step forward and do your part. We're doing the hard part now because we're trying to recall and pull together in some sort of organized fashion the past 25 or 30 years of our community and how we came to be who we are today. But once we do get that done, and believe me, this group will get it done, and we will have a solid and reliable history with recognition of all the proper people, it will then be up to the younger people in this room and the next generation to maintain that so that we don't go through this again. And so remember your responsibility and remember that us as people are what make Dallas the great city that it is. Thank you very much.